I'm just gonna wait until some people pop up. Hi everyone, uh, we're gonna start in a couple minutes our curator's tour of Art of Reflection with Robin Taylor. My name is Michael Mengson. I am the Public Programs and Outreach Coordinator here at the Art Gallery of Alberta, and we're so pleased to have Robin come and talk to us. Robin is also in programming. They're the Programming Coordinator of YEG, the Come Up at the Africa Center. Sorry, we just had a technical glitch. I'm just gonna uh, get Robin on the call and then we'll start the tour. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi everyone, so like um, was mentioned, my name is Robin and I am the program coordinator for the what for the Art Gallery of Alberta respectfully acknowledges that we are located on Treaty 6 territory, the traditional land of diverse indigenous peoples, including the Cree, Nitsisapi, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakota Sioux, Iroquois, Diné, Ojibwe, Soto, and Anishinaabe. We also acknowledge all of the Indigenous, Inuit, and Métis peoples who make Alberta their home today. So thank you so much for um, the opportunity. I'm really excited to show you um, the exhibition that we've been working on this entire time. So why do the come up for a youth program under the Africa Center? And our goal is to empower black youth in Edmonton. Um, we're composed of black youth volunteers who work in different sectors of community to create initiatives meant for empowerment, education, et cetera. So we have task forces and our arts and culture task force was a task force that was responsible for curating the art of reflection. Uh, since we're in a pandemic, when we're thinking about what our theme could be for the art of reflection, we were just thinking that, you know, even though we're in a pandemic and things are hectic, uh, we really have a time to like kind of step back and reflect and maybe see how, you know, the learnings from that reflection can shape how we move and view the future. So that's what we asked our artists. We asked, um, the theme is going to be the art of reflection. And we really just want to see like how your sense of self and your sense of reflection throughout the pandemic will shape how you create art and also how you move um, in the space. And this is what we have that I'm so excited to show you. Um, it was interesting because this is the first time we've done an exhibition virtually. So this is actually my first time seeing all of the pieces and it's really, really great to, um, I guess, share this with you. So first we're gonna start here. This is kind of the first wall in the corner and um, this is from Matcha Abdallah. Matcha is an artist from Edmonton. She's Rondi's based. So, and she creates acrylic, uh, she creates art through acrylic on canvas. Um, the names of these pieces are Midnight Blues on the left and forward on the right. And essentially they're capturing um, these two people at different stages in their life. One is kind of lamenting on, you know, life's transgressions and the hardships that you can face. And another is like celebrating and looking forward, um, you know, into the future. Both are um, tied to, you know, deep thoughts of spirituality. So Matcha, she kind of uses that, um, her religion and also her just like spiritual themes to kind of connect these two pieces. And I really, really love the blues in them. So personal favorite, even though I'm not supposed to have favorites. <laughs> so I'll take you to the front here. So this is kind of where the exhibition started if you came through this main entrance. And we also have another one of these um, artists named Elisa Umo, Elisa Umohosa. And she also has two pieces that kind of reflect um, you know, different places in um, the subject's life. Um, Elisa really um, <laughs> works with portraits, and something that's really cool about her work is that she, ty she typically does like black and white portraits that have like a vibrant colored backdrop. So this piece is called um, Testimony, no, this piece is called Rest, and this piece is called Testimony, which I thought was really great. And I love the, the meaning behind rest, um, essentially, it talks about the fact that, you know, even though we're in a pandemic, especially in 2020, there's almost no time to rest, <laughs> which is kind of crazy, even though we're all at home. So I really resonated with that piece, and I hope that when you come, uh, you can read more of her description and hear more about her, her thoughts. 
Um, next we have Lady in the Water by Shaheem Small. And something that I love about this piece is not just the fact that it's graphite on paper, but also the frame. Like, maybe that's a small thing, but I really feel like the frame kind of puts together the entire piece. Um, and I love how his piece was just inspired by a mysterious figure in the mire of his consciousness, which I think is really, really cool. Shaheen's also an artist that's always in, um, that's fre feature frequently featured in the Five Artists One Love Art Gallery Showcase. And Five Artists One Love was actually the organization that allowed us to have this opportunity with the Art Gallery of Alberta. So we'll always be grateful to them. And yeah, Shaheen, he was a really, he's a really great artist as well. So, if we keep going, we have the central wall, which features some photographers in Edmonton. So this piece, uh, this photo series is from Aaliyah Logan, who is a photographer here in Edmonton, um, and she's amazing. Her piece is all about community, and the idea that, you know, a lot of the times community isn't just, you know, through who's your biological sister or brother, that kind of thing. It really comes to the people. It really comes from the people that you connect with. Um, and so she like kind of puts different um, pieces of how community, I guess, can be reflected um, through either friendship, through relationships, through camaraderie, um, and how sometimes we're even connected through you know our struggles and our traumas. So that's what I really love about Aaliyah's work, and I'm so happy about how it came out. It's wonderful. Um, then we have another piece by Precious K. Um, it's kind of a bigger piece. It's called Pronounced Nonconformity. And this piece is about um, Precious's reflection on gender, you know, and how our world is so gendered <laughs> to the point where it's like, it doesn't even make sense anymore, you know? So she talks about like, you know, this idea and this concept of how gender is this construct that really boxes us all in. And this piece is kind of her way, I guess, of breaking out of that and breaking out of that mold and exploring that concept further. So yeah, I really invite you to read her description for, or their description for um, this piece because I think uh, we can all kind of learn a few things from it. Um, next we have Galakin, who is another photographer. So we kind of tried to frame this gallery with three, um, a photo series on the left and right of Precious's piece. So this is another set of three. And Galakin's name is actually kind of cool. So the set is Addressing My Pain to Create Progress in My Passion. And, you know, Galakin, he really took the artist reflection theme, I guess really personally or internally, and, and figured out how, you know, in a way, this in his description, he talks about how the pandemic kind of took away his ability to practice photography, right? You're not really able to book those sessions with people anymore and have that connection. So when he talks about um, addressing his pain to create progress in his passion, he kind of took it upon himself to step out of his comfort zone and actually do a, a session with himself. And through that session, he learned like just so much about <laughs> I guess it renewed his love with photography and he got to see his art in a different way. And that came directly from being in the pandemic. So yeah, this is like his first time, I guess, in, in front of the camera in this way. And I think that the results were actually pretty amazing. So here we have some more pieces. For this wall, we kind of have like a smaller set of pieces or smaller size of pieces that we tried to, to play around with that a little bit. So this is from, oh, you're down there. But that's okay. <laughs> this is from Casey Cuffey. And his piece is really just all about seeing, I guess, yourself in his art. He really thought about this when it came to when it comes to like, you know, black men and how we move, how we move through the world. And his hope and, and anticipation was that when you're looking at his piece, you're also able to see some of yourself in it, or you're also able to connect with some of the emotions that he's putting through that art. So it's called Slow Down and Stare, and I think that's a really apt name. Um, Lisa's piece is called Daydreamer, and I love it because it's just, so whimsical it really is supposed to capture like how she viewed the world you know daydreaming and seeing it you know full of possibility and full of hope and full of vision and i really feel as if you can get that whimsical vibe with lisa's piece she's also a tcu member a budding artist as well so it was really great to see her work um, in this gallery um we're almost done we have jay dante's pieces next which i think are just so cool 
he does um, acrylic on con canvas with um, collage, and his whole concept and, and way of creating art is to really like deconstruct the human body while also using like these really intense, vibrant colors. So if you look like at the forehead here, I think it's so cool. There's like a finger sticking out of the forehead, which I think is really interesting. <laughs> but yeah, like it's, it's a really great piece. And the idea is, it's called Something Beautiful. This piece is called Something Beautiful. And the idea is that, you know, in the midst of darkness, we can still always find hope or we can still always find something beautiful in our experiences. Um, and I think that's a really apt um, way to connect to the reflection and, and you know, a way to view how we're uh, living in the pandemic. Um, the last two are from Fetzel T. This is called Quiet. Fetzel, he's really interesting. He's born in Eritrea and he's um, featured all around the world when it comes to um, his work. He typically does charcoal on paper and he uses his art as a way to express emotion, um, especially when he's not able to, if that makes sense. So yeah, I thought it was really cool. And I think if you look at his description, you'll learn a lot more about him and his experiences as well as this piece. Um, and finally, we have a piece by Genesis, who's actually another TCU member. It's called It Is What It Is. And it kind of reflected their, um, I guess, sense of hopelessness during the pandemic too, just seeing everything that's going on and also connecting with their friends and see, feeling really, really helpless, you know, and, and actually kind of just going to a piece of resignation or a feeling of resignation when it comes to how we're going to move in the pandemic. And, and I really thought that it's interesting how she contrasts that black and white with that color to kind of understand, like, to kind of show like her, I guess, feeling of resign, resignation with everything that's going on. Um, but yeah, that is actually the end of our exhibition. Hopefully I didn't end a bit too abruptly there. But we do have like a little bit of a bonus if you go here to the side. So like I said, TCU were a program under the Africa Center. So the Africa Center is a nonprofit that actually has a lot of different programs. One of them is the Artemo Project, which focuses on mental health for black youth and black communities. So these pieces come from a workshop that the Africa Center did where they were trying to equip kids and families with the tools that they could use to actually benefit and um, promote their mental health during the pandemic. So each kind of did these pieces that had it, it was almost like a self-portrait, but they also tried to um, include affirmations and learning about what affirmations look like and include that in their pieces so that they can kind of, I guess, hold on to that and remember that while they're going through the pandemic. So you'll see words like, you know, kind, family, music, just these things that, you know, kind of keep people's moods up <laughs> during the pandemic. And yeah, I think it was great. You'll also see some poetry that's been written or some spoken, I think it's actually words about. Um, that's written, we have one that's called Corona, Please Stop. I feel like a lot of us kind of feel that way. But yeah, this is a rock that was created um, during their workshop too, which I think when you read the lyrics, a lot of us can really um, vibe with them. <laughs> so yeah, that is the exhibition. That's what the Art of Perfection looks like. I really invite you all to come down when you can um, to look at the pieces because I feel like images don't even do them justice. But I think we're going to go and we're going to chat a little bit more about the pieces and we're also going to talk a little bit to the artists um, who created some of the work. So while we're heading there, can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. So. Have someone requested you can see some requests and we have uh, someone requested to join the video okay oh thank you okay so we actually have some people on that we're gonna invite um, to the live so when we came to the um, there we go do we have to come up oh no they can't join Oh dear. So we do have one person coming on that I just want to invite, but I can't invite them right now. 
Um, hopefully we can get Belinda on. Belinda is one of our TCU members. Um, when we created the exhibit, it wasn't just me as a curator. We had other members there as well. And Belinda, she was also the lead curator. So we want to invite her on to hear like her experiences and concepts that she interwoven in the, she put in the piece. But I'm not sure how to add her on. Belinda, are you here? Can you wave? <laughs> or type it in the chat? Or if anyone has any questions while we try to get her on, this would be a good time. Maybe I didn't explain anything, something as well, or you want to hear more. No? Okay, so I, it looks like we, oh, Belinda is here. Okay, awesome. I just don't know how to get you on. Oh, it says you're unable to join. Yeah, so you have to request to join on to the live. Yeah, or maybe we can try later. Okay, but I there's no option for her to request. Hmm. Okay. But this for, someone has a question, was this for Black History Month, what's the exhibition called? Yeah, so the goal was to have it exhibited through Black History Month, but unfortunately, due to the pandemic, um, we weren't able to, um, we, we weren't able to open during that time, but it was supposed to also extend throughout Black History Month. So hopefully when we, when the restrictions ease, um, we can come back and, and still celebrate with the work. But, that's okay. I don't think we're able to talk to Belinda at this time. Uh, Belinda, if you're able to maybe like come back on um, and request, that would be great. But if not, that's all good. I think we can still go and talk to some of the artists here. I see a bunch of them, which is cool. Is Galican here? Let's talk to Galican. Galican, you can request to join. Yeah, just request to join the line and we can chat a little bit about your work. Okay, I think you just have to request. Okay, there we go. I'm accepting your request. Thank you guys for being so patient with us. <laughs> Galakin! Hey, how are you? I'm good. Wait, you can't see me. <laughs> Here I am. Hey, how are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm glad you were able to join. We wanted to talk to you a little bit about your pieces for the artist reflection. I don't know if you heard my description. Hopefully I did it justice. No, absolutely. Yeah, you got it right on. You nailed it. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Awesome. Well, first, do you want to introduce yourself and, you know, tell the people who you are and the kind of art you do? Uh, yeah. So my name is Geli Kambuki. I am a Edmonton-based photographer. I'd say I focus a lot on events, uh, portrait photography, and now I'm starting to do real estate. But ultimately, it's all about capturing emotions and, um, yeah, essentially people's emotions in the moment. So whether it's uh, events through La Connexional or working with um, various uh, businesses that are trying to brand themselves or even like uh, portrait photography and like kind of fashion to kind of um, portray like a specific emotion that they're um, doing in them. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for that. I see your work all the time, especially with La Conexina and I love it, of thank course. You. But do you want to talk about like your pieces and how you felt about the exhibit and the theme, like how you connected to it? Yeah, it was honestly uh, really tough because I'm a perfectionist, but to see um, like the theme being um, like reflection, art of reflection, I definitely had to reflect even before uh, submitting those photos. And ironically, I had, um, and like you said, I had recently gotten a backdrop and a, uh, a f like a studio. And then I wanted to become the model, the photographer and everything. And like you said, it was a kind of like the first time that I was 
actually like the model and it was definitely stepping out of my uh, comfort zone um but this or this theme definitely pushed me just because i'm not much to be in front of the camera or let alone uh, show a sense of vulnerability because it is very vulnerable to be in front of the camera and just kind of put everything um, in front of you and yeah as you described covid had really affected me um unfortunately I, had, I was i tested positive for covid so even then that was rough but to see just like the support from my friends um was truly amazing but i was able to just put all those all the changes that were happening in my life from moving out uh, from almost like graduating and unfortunately being uh, tested positive for covid um but also even going through therapy and just being able to show my vulnerability and to learn how to process my emotion and i love that about photography that you can just kind of put everything and just portray your emotions in so many different ways and that's kind of what happened and yeah just was very vulnerable and showed my weakness and like all as you can tell I look kind of tired so there's a little fatigue and yeah so that's kind of just like what inspired me to do it but it also took a lot for me to submit it because I was like I don't think that I want my face to be plastered all over the art gallery for everyone to see like most uh, artists are usually taking photos of other people or portraying other people but to portray myself was definitely one step ahead so yeah yeah thank you so much for sharing that first off i'm so sorry that happened to you during the pandemic but um i the thing i love about your set is that i think you can really the emotion really speaks through like you can really see the sense of vulnerability and you can really see the sense of perfection and you can really see you know in a way like you you do look lost if that makes sense but it's interesting to see like how you were vulnerable with that and I think with your description and how you talk about you know how that led to these pieces I think a lot of people can connect with that it's crazy like we're in a pandemic like these things are gonna happen like it's yeah. not easy <laughs> but I feel like we're still like no we have to be a perfectionist we have to do this we have to complete that and it's it's nice that you showed that other side the side that I think a lot of people can actually resonate with um during this time so thank you so much for sharing that um it's always cool to see like how you I guess split the roles um it's interesting when you hear about how photographers are in front of the camera they're like I'm not used to this exactly so I, <laughs> I can't do this sharing <laughs> because uh, I started the uh I guess self-portrait kind of series and to just like kind of make the jokes that you're your own like um like you're the creative director you're your own um what's it called makeup artists and all that stuff so but there's just so much work that goes into it and it also like you said uh gave me a new i fell in love with photography again in a more profound way just to see that how all the pieces come in together and also i guess going back to the being a perfectionist one of the photos actually came out blurry but it i don't know i felt like it was kind of artistic or i just like i loved it even more because it was out of focus just because like you said i was kind of like lost i didn't necessarily know where i was going or what was going to happen and that just the addition of it being um, out of focus just definitely showed that in an even more profound way. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have one last question. Do you think that like with this experience, you'd probably like, is there anything you're going to change about how you do photography? Like when we're back into the, like when we're able to have those sessions again, like, do you think that that experience has influenced how you're going to be doing photography moving forward? Yeah, I think one, all step out of my comfort zone whether it's working with new clients or even trying different concepts but also being in front of the camera and even trying more uh self-portraits but at the end of the day i think it's definitely connecting even more with the people that i work with um because at the end of the day i always view them as um not only clients but also friends and it's all it's also just been so amazing to grow with these individuals that you just met on the internet it's like hey i love your work it's like i would love to work for you um, but yeah, just essentially just like stepping more and more out of my comfort zone, trying different concepts and also allowing myself to um, put the work out there that I don't think is perfect. Because similar to this, I perfect. I thought there was loss to it, but to put myself out there to be vulnerable and to share my work of art and to see how it resonated with so much people was just, it was, it was so powerful. So I think that's definitely one thing I'll be taking um, from this experience. Wow, thank you so much. I feel like I'm learning and I'm nowhere near artistic. So <laughs> it's so cool to hear that. Thank you so much, Galakan. And you can tell people where they can find you, where they can see like more of your work. Yeah, um, yeah so as my handle says, yeah, my um, Instagram handle is Buki Visuals. Uh, so B A I Visuals. And I also have a website called BukiVisuals.com. Uh, oh, no. 
at Beauty Visuals, beautyvisuals.com for you to see more of the work that Galicon does. And when you come down to the Art of Reflection and the Art Gallery, um, when we're able to definitely check out his pieces, I think you'll definitely see um, some cool stuff. Um, so is, I think we're getting some more requests. We can talk to Belinda. Can you hear me? Hey! <laughs> Sorry about that technical difficulty. How are you? Me. I honestly, <laughs> technology is not my thing, but I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. Like, we were talking about the curation, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I wish Belinda was here to talk about her experiences. So, now that you're here, I'll introduce you. Um, Belinda, she's our Arts and Culture Task Force lead, and she played a huge role in like, curating this exhibition and placing the pieces where there are and helping with selecting the pieces. I just want you to talk about like your own connection with the exhibition, like what your favorite parts curating were, all that good stuff. Well, it was um, a collaborative effort, of course, like TCU is, um, like I work within the task force that's arts and culture and I lead it, but there are other members who helped me to nice experience. I actually, the theme of reflection wasn't my first choice. It was like voted, I was voted, like I was outvoted by everyone else. But um, when it, we started actually developing the work and talking to the, art, to the artists, especially since the exhibition was getting planned towards the end of 2020, it just seemed like the perfect to, like Is there audio um, cutting out? Can everyone hear her? Sorry, Belinda, just one second. Can everyone hear, or is the audio kind of? Maybe I should. I don't... Hello. Hey. Yeah, we can hear you. Is it better? Is the audio better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot better now. I don't know where it cut out, but. <laughs> um. Yeah, I was just uh, mentioning that it was a collaborative effort with the other members of the arts and culture task force um, from TCU. And is it still cutting out? I'm so sorry. I don't know how to fix it. Um, we can hear you better. It's just low. It's all good. OK. Um, but yeah, so it was just a collaborative effort with the other members. And especially the planning process starting out towards the end of 2020, it just seemed like the perfect theme for everybody to reflect on the year on. And so a lot of the artists um, had already made pieces that were like reflective of the theme. And I just, yeah, it's just like my process throughout it was just appreciating the opportunity to work with black artists. I am very content with the way that it turned out, but I think I'm just always grateful for the opportunity to like put black people and give them a platform to showcase their art. Like I know Masha sold one of her first pieces ever at a TCU exhibition. And so mm -hmm. being able to like do things like that and give opportunities to people is like a very rewarding experience for me. Um, reflecting on like everyone's different take on the theme of reflection was also um, significant. Like Fetsum, um piece on or like even Casey Cuffey sorry's piece um was very like I don't know it spoke a lot to me about seeing yourself and um like in a mirror image and like he talks about in his description how it's maybe a youthful version of you but it lives in your head and it's not just like um stuck in time and I thought that that was very um valuable and it was just like I don't know, it was just a really nice notion to think about, as well as like you mentioned, whimsical Lisa's piece is, like just seeing everyone's take on reflection, like her piece Daydreamer is just very beautiful and telling of like how she once saw the world and how her experiences have led her to um, her worldviews and perspectives of the world today. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. It's It's been like a key 
an amazing ride, like just seeing how everything comes together, seeing how everyone's like intentions and visions like kind of all meld together to create this exhibition. Because yeah, I remember when we were coming up with the theme, there were just so many ideas that were like, okay, we gotta vote. <laughs> we gotta just go with one direction and reflection yeah. was it. And Lisa actually came up with that theme, the art of reflection. Yes, yeah. And just seeing how like everyone's, because we had like themes with like show passion, show this, show that. And they all kind of like still came together. It was really, really cool. So thank you so much, Melinda. We're actually gonna invite Masha on and we're gonna talk to her for a little bit. So yeah, we all appreciate right. it. No worries. Yeah. Bye guys. Hey. So, Masha, you just have to request your two pieces. If I, like, move a little bit, you can see Masha's pieces back there. A little backdrop. Oh, this moves with me. Okay, oops. <laughs> One second. Masha, you can request, or I can maybe add you. Here we go. She's like, Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I am good. I'm so excited to talk to you about your pieces. Yes, I'm so excited <laughs> to be here too. Hopefully when I describe them, hopefully when I describe them like I did them justice, but if there's anything you want to add on, we'll have that time for sure. <laughs> I actually I came on just once you had already finished describing mine, so I have no idea what you said, but I'm sure you did a okay. good job. We can leave it there, though. We'll ask you to just describe your pieces. But yeah, do you want to introduce yourself to everyone and then just talk about who you are, the kind of art you do, et cetera? Sure. Um, my name is Masha Abdallah, and uh, I am a painter. I mostly do portrait art, but I don't want to limit myself because I'm hoping to explore more things. And then, um, I'm a fairly recent painter. I started painting in 2017 um, and didn't really take it seriously it was kind of more just like a hobby and I was just learning and then just uh, when the pandemic started uh, my sister encouraged me to start an Instagram page and kind of uh, explore that more and that's kind of when things started taking off um, so I've been really enjoying it and uh, yeah like uh, like Galican said uh, I also tested positive for COVID and it ended up being kind of a blessing for my art career because I had so much time <laughs> to paint during those two weeks that I had to quarantine and I, I didn't have any symptoms really so I was fine so that's when I painted like my most popular piece and things started taking off from there so um, yeah God just took a bad thing and turned it into a good which is kind of the theme of uh, one of my paintings too so it was yeah it was really cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. That's actually an amazing story. Like just how you're able to take that moment in the pandemic and like create <laughs> something so amazing, you know? So do you want to talk a little bit more about your pieces and what you were thinking or the minds that you were having when you were creating them? Sure, yeah. Um, I actually, for both of those pieces, I had just, um, I was painting them before I was approached for the exhibition so I just had it on my heart that I should create some pieces that I can eventually put in a gallery somewhere but I was thinking like in the distant future and <laughs> as soon as I was done with the, the second piece I received an email uh, from Africa Center just uh, asking me to be a part of this and I was like wow it's perfect time <laughs> um, so I was able to apply the theme to those paintings as well I felt like it really fit very well um, the one with the darker background um, midnight blues the theme is a little bit uh, darker just being in a period of um, just feeling more down and sad during the pandemic I think especially when the, the winter hit we can all relate to um, the mix of seasonal depression with the pandemic together um, and just uh, yeah just feeling the lows and being able to just reflect on the lows and being okay with being in the lows while having a hope that um, God is going to come through eventually so that's uh, that's kind of what my thought was behind that one and then the second one with uh, the man with the brighter background um that was kind of my uh the season that i was in at that point where i was kind of coming off of that low season and just looking forward to good things that were coming and obviously good things came <laughs> uh so that one is called forward 
And uh, I have scriptures attached to both of them. So for Midnight Blues, I had um, Lamentations 324. And it just says, I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. Um, so just waiting for God in those d dark times. Um, and then the second one for forward, I had uh, Isaiah 43, 18 to 19. And it says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So that was just really um, the message that I was holding on to at that time. Yeah, no, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Like, it's amazing to see how you kind of interwove, like, your own experiences, your lived experiences is with hope, with, like, you know, I guess, lamentation. And you also have that element of spirituality in there as well that I think people can really resonate with. You know, I think you look at these portraits and you're like, well, I see myself. <laughs> I see myself. I recognize those midnight blues, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, I love that you like spoke about that and hearing you talk about it, I think really resonates, you know? And something I love about your pieces is that honestly, I'm not an artist y'all. So when I see these pieces, I'm just always taken aback. And then you look at them in person because, you know, doing this virtually, you're not able to really like see, like we weren't able to meet, right? Or see the pieces fully because of, you know, social distancing and the guidelines. But looking at these pieces like in person, there's just so many things that you don't catch in images, right? Like I love the eyes for Midnight Blues. So that's something that I want people to like look at, like the eyes that really are eye-catching <laughs> and then if you also look at forward just like your use of color like especially in the face like I see greens oranges reds like it's so beautiful so thank you so much for like sharing that with us and is there anything else that you want to add where can people find you that kind of thing what are your future sneak peeks I guess of future pieces um yeah so my Instagram handle is the one that I have here it's um at art.by.masha and I'm working on a website. Hopefully soon I'll be able to share that too. And uh, just upcoming stuff. I'm, I'm going to be featured as the artist of the month at Remedy Cafe on 124th. Um, so I think for all of April, I'll have some of my pieces there. So you guys can go and check that out. Oh, love that. So Remedy on 124th, art.by.masha and a website is coming. So yes. that's how you'll find her and more beautiful pieces. Thank you so much. Thank you as well. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so grateful for you guys. Of course. Thank you. We're grateful for you too. You know, it's interesting how you're talking about, oh, since you're still here, I was going to just start talking to myself. <laughs> it's interesting how you were talking about how the emails kind of came at the right time. And in my head, I remember just that moment. Oh, I sent these emails too late. I should have sent them this. I should have sent them that. And you're like, this is what I needed these emails. That, that actually made me feel a lot better. So thank you for that. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys have a great day. And uh, yeah, good luck to the other people who are about to talk. Yeah. Thank you. See ya. I think next we have Genesis. New thing. And it was spring for its springtime. Yeah. It's so great to be in spring right now. I think Genesis is gonna come on. Someone has a question about what are our requirements for the art gallery or for this exhibition, I guess. I don't know exactly what the art gallery requirements are. Maybe Michael can tell us more about that. But for our pieces, that's a really interesting question. Our goal is to just provide artists with a platform. So a lot of the times, like, you know, we are always looking for like new artists, new pieces of work, new disciplines that artists have. Um, that are, you know, obviously from the African Caribbean and Black community here in Edmonton. And we just try to figure out like how we can feature their work. So um, we try to give everyone like, so in this exhibition, we have actually a lot of new artists that we've never like featured in our exhibition before, like let's say Precious or um, Aliyah or uh, Lisa themselves, like we have some new artists. So we, we really try to balance it with like artists that we've never necessarily worked with before versus artists that we have. So we try to have a few events and initiatives that we can use to feature the artists here in Edmonton because there's so many amazing artists, but that's kind of how it is. I hope that makes sense, but um, yeah. But if you have a piece, like you could always send it to us at the come up and we'll like save it. And whenever we need artists, we'll go through that archive and reach out. Yeah, uh, is Genesis here? Let me see. 
Goliath. Goliath. I think it might have worked. But yeah, if you have any other questions or comments, let me know. Yeah, the art really is beautiful. Oh, Justice is here. Hey. Hi. How are you? I'm well. How are you? You look very lovely, by the way. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you're doing a good job. <laughs> I'm top half, but I Sorry? appreciate it. No, I'm like, it's only my top half, but yeah. I'm going to take it. <laughs> chef's kiss, chef's kiss. <laughs> so do you want to introduce the kind of art that you do? Um, yeah, sure. Hello, my name is Genesis. Um, I don't really know. I don't think I've quite um, decided quite yet on the type of art that I create right now. It's just like acrylic on like canvas and some sketches here and there. But uh, yeah, that's really that. <laughs> no, that's cool though. You're like exploring, I guess, your disciplines, and I love the piece that you did. We're gonna talk about it a little bit. Actually, we can talk about it now. <laughs> okay. Um, exactly. for, it is what it is. Like, what was your like? I guess I, I kind of described it. Hopefully, I did it some justice. But I want to hear from you. Like, what was your I guess experience creating that piece? Um. Yeah. So when, because I kind of hopped on to like um creating the piece or like the being part of it at uh, the gallery a little later than the others I think and I was kind of strangled like going all over the place trying to figure out um what to create and um which is kind of weird for me because throughout 2020 all I did was reflect but yeah I reflected on so many things because it was so chaotic um for so so many different reasons um that it was kind of tough for me to pinpoint or land on one thing to create on so I just decided to go inwards and um, kind of do a little bit of a self-portrait type thing um, with having the background to represent all of the chaos like without it being just like one specific thing and uh, I titled it it is what it is is because uh, like you said it was just kind of like the theme within my friends and like how I felt about the year um, the lack of like hopelessness in so many different factors, um, being stuck at home, uh, social um, events that were unfolding, I guess, <laughs> in the world. Uh, just, it just, it was very fitting. There, it was uh, a phrase that I said quite a lot that year, a phrase that I heard quite a lot, maybe not in those exact wording, but definitely same meaning. And uh, yeah, to just wrap it up, I guess um, I wanted, so like, like you said um, earlier, I did try to do like the contrast with the black and white and the background, but then I did a little lining <laughs> across my eyes to just indicate like, um, like that's all I saw. It's kind of like, um, I think Casey's uh, artwork. I was um, hoping that if you saw that you would be able to kind of identify the chaos that like people probably experienced last year also uh because people feel as though like not people feel as though there's that saying that like the eyes is the door to like someone's soul i felt as though like my soul was definitely not rested last year but yeah that was my piece my thought process everything yeah thank you for sharing like i was definitely gonna ask you to talk about that like focal point because for people who haven't seen it like in her piece it's a self-portrait but yeah those eyes it's it's like a black and white portrait and then there's chaos all of these colors in the background but the right. eyes also have like a slash through them and yeah it's really cool that you're talking about like you do that on purpose to show kind of the chaos that you're seeing and feeling even though you look kind of like neutral and yeah like I was, I was very much <laughs> numb through everything but yeah. my eyes was like the only thing very active throughout that year so you talked about like kind of creating things throughout the pandemic like and just throughout all of this like I guess what has art like how has art helped you I guess with processing and reflecting and just moving through with the pandemic does that make sense like yeah how has art like, like um I think art for me throughout the pandemic and even before and moving forward is always just like, it's a safe space. It's kind of why I call myself Genesis. Um, it's like uh, to represent creation. Art for me is a way to create a safe space. Art for me is a way to create sense of chaos in my life. It's a way to process the good, the bad, 
ups, the downs, anything really. Um, yeah. I, did I answer that question? Yeah, yeah it's like a way to like create. Because honestly, one of like my lives, aside from trying to figure out what my uh, life purpose, I think second to that, I'm always trying to really um, understand and be understood, if that makes any sense. To, mm -hmm. to, to speak and be understood and to listen and um, understand. So art helps me to do that. And uh, creating and also consuming other people's art allows me to kind of do that in a way. So I really love this um, art gallery and all of like the artists and the work that they created. It's just very lovely to um, be a part of it and to watch you walk through all of the works and stuff. Just now, like I was out here hitting that heart button so fast, like <laughs> I don't even know. It felt like the flash. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, it's so crazy to just see like the connections. Like some of the connection, like some of the gallery pieces were like okay. Like for example, we have Elisa starting and Masha's ending, and yeah. we do that because like they both focus on portraits. But Elisa's, I'm gonna just turn it all the way like yeah. Elisa she does like black and white portraiture and like has like a vibrant background and then like <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have done this I'm sorry it's a bit <laughs> but yeah like Masha she also yeah. does like portraits but incorporates more vibrant colors just think, like hearing you talk about like how art connects to your healing and how it connects to like just you know expressing your thoughts because you're paired with Fetzum's art and his art is the exact same like he talks about how he like grew up in a place where he wasn't able to express his thoughts he wasn't able to express the sense and he used art yeah. as a way to express his thoughts and we never even realized that there was that connection between Fetzum's piece and your piece where you guys both use art to kind of reflect how you're in chaotic moments so hearing you talk about that was yes. like dang I should really pick up a brush <laughs> <laughs> no yeah That's, yeah oh, it's very Thank lovely you so I, earlier you had pointed out or like mentioned how you feel as though you're not the most artistic individual but I feel as though like art's so beautiful in that sense that it's like a neutralizing ground like to me personally I don't think there's such a thing as bad art if that makes any sense there is literally pieces of just a plain black dot and that's like you know groundbreaking so never think that your artistic ability is like low because it doesn't look like something else or what is i thought to be art yeah no as long as you're creating i think that's that art, you know yeah, it's like it's just it's just a medium of self expression and there's no good or bad. It's an, it's just neutral, right? So thank you for right. that. Whoa, look at these gems. Yeah. Okay, Instagram live. <laughs> thank you so much, for Genesis. Sure. Like your piece is amazing. I'm gonna invite everyone to look at it. You'll definitely see elements of your lived experiences and your life when you look at that piece. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for having me. This was lovely. Oh, thank you. Bye everybody. I think the last person we have now is Casey and we've actually been talking about Casey's pieces for a minute so I'm excited to see him like you know and talk about what he has to to say is Casey still let me just check Casey oh I can't invite him Oh, there we go. Casey's coming on. We can all give him like a virtual clap when he's here. Hey, whoa, look at that. I recognize that piece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know I planned ahead. I thought it was oh, good. <laughs> I love it. Hey, so you. do you want to introduce yourself, the kind of art you do, the kind of work you do? Sure. Yeah, so my name is Casey Krishna Kuffy. Um, hence my handle. That's I know a lot of people ask me why the name Krishna is in my handle. It's actually my middle name, so it's a given name to me. Um, yeah, I, as an artist, I dabble a lot in creative direction, graphic design, um, and photography as well. Um, and then recently now, um, I've taken upon painting. Um, I've always been a creative person. I've always drawn and creative art my whole life. Um, but surprisingly, this is the first time I've ever actually publicly 
um, put any of my artwork in a gallery. So it's a good experience. I'm very happy to, to be a part of it. Um, yeah, 28 years old, I have two kids and a wife, and I'm a black man. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Claim it. So do you want to talk a little bit more about your piece before? Actually, your piece has been coming up. I don't know if you've watched the live, but a lot of people are like, I see myself in Casey's piece. I resonate with Casey's piece. So it's interesting that you're kind of ending it all off because I want to hear you talk more about like your process when you're creating it and, and what your intention was. Yeah, sure. So um, actually, like a lot of the artists, um, this piece was actually started before you guys had approached us. Um, it was about 80% done when you guys had approached me. Um, and the story behind this piece actually was just, so I work as a freelancer. So at the end of the day working, it was like midnight. I decided to go to sleep and I couldn't sleep. So I decided to draw what was in my mind. And this was what was in my mind. It was this young black man. Um, and yeah, and I just kind of let it all out. I used, I used an iPad. Uh, for one of the first times and I just kind of let it all out. I used pencil and paint on the iPad um, uh, using Adobe software to kind of create this. And yeah, it was just like, it was in my head. And then when you ha guys had uh, reached out to me, I was like, well, this is perfect because I drew this in a time of reflection. Um, it was kind of mid pandemic in the middle of the summer. Uh, things have been slowing down. Um, and yeah, and I was having trouble sleeping because I'm worried about the next day, like what's going to happen the next day? What are we going to do the next day? Uh, how am I going to make money the next day? How am I going to get this job, this job, right? Work as a freelancer. It's always like that, but I feel more of that pressure once you're, you're kind of in the pandemic. Um, so I thought this was interesting because it really kind of brought me to a younger version of myself. Um, a younger version of myself. This is kind of <laughs> this is how I kind of, I, I picture them, you know, very artistic, very creative. Um, and that's what I've been kind of focusing on ever since, I guess, the pandemic has started. Um, just kind of honing my creative skills and using that to my advantage um, to kind of keep my spirits up, keep my, uh, my energy up. Um, I, everything I do comes from my creativity, so. Yeah, no, thank you for that. It's interesting, too, there's like another parallel because like in your piece, you talked about how that image just came from your consciousness. And then we also have Shaheem's piece, which is another image that came like, you know, in the midst of like him thinking and just in the midst of his consciousness. But it's really amazing, like, I guess how many people are resonating with the words that you have in your description and just like different features of that person. Because, yeah. yeah, the eyes are very passive. Really. I don't know. It's like you look at it and you're like, hmm. There's something yeah. in there. Let me, let me just see real quick. You know, so it's yeah. cool that like that's what actually, came about. Oh, wait, are you gonna add something? Yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna actually add one more thing about the skin. So there's not a lot of definition until you get really close. Um, and it's kind of intentional. Um, and that that um, that style actually, I was inspired by a, a famous black artist, Carrie James Marshall, and he paints um, black characters with black paint with just like a little bit of white pigment pigment to kind of add a little bit of shade. So that's kind of what inspired me to kind of make his skin um, that, that type of color and that tone as well. No, that makes so much sense because like, like I said, like when you're seeing images, like just online, you're not able to catch like all the different like intentions or the small details that you have. And I think that's why I was like looking at it like closer, like, wait, there's something here. Like, I know there's something <laughs> else here. Yeah. So, yeah, and it's amazing that people were able to kind of see that and kind of get that. Um, from the painting and as well from the description as well. So that's really cool. So I think you guys did a really good job of, of helping me bring that to, to life. Oh, no problem. I just am so happy that like I got to be in this space and we finally get to see. I feel like I'm always emailing y'all like it's still not over. <laughs> <laughs> we still cannot gather. So for us to be here to just see everything like I feel as if there's just a lot of emotion and intention in this space especially when you start having these conversations with the artists and you start seeing like okay this is what reflection meant like to me like this is how it connects I have themes of hope themes of passion themes of hopelessness you know yeah. themes of loss and I think that that's just like such a cool thing and I love how your piece kind of works as like a grounding element you know so it's like okay we see how everyone's like art is here we see their intentions their emotions that they were creating and your art kind of like is like okay now reflect that back into yourself like what yeah. do you now see yeah. you know so is there anything else that you wanted to like talk about like just in terms of colors or like how did it make you feel i guess when you're done with the the piece um 
Um, I was very like, I don't, like I was proud of myself, obviously, because um, I mentioned to you this was like one of the first submissions I've ever had in an art gallery anywhere. Um, as part of myself, I was actually very proud of like the come up in the community that like you guys were able to have this opportunity and offer that opportunity to, to us and all the other artists. Um, I was just kind of honored to be part of, of something like this and like my peers, like I think very highly of them. They're all very talented. So yeah, I was just kind of feeling of like belonging, happiness, a lot of, a lot of positive emotions. So. Oh, thank you. Well, yeah. no, that's so... Ah, thank God. No worries. And, and the, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, and if I add one more thing, um, when I first started my journey on an artist, one of the first things I learned is to create with a purpose. So whether whatever art you're doing, whether if it's photography, videography, painting, uh, just direction, styling, even if it's social media content, if you're doing it with a purpose, that's always going to give you that fulfillment that we're all looking for in art. So I would just kind of like to pass that information on to other artists or anybody else out there listening. Wow. There's so many gems from this live. Like, I think I'm going to be looking back and I'll be a budding artist soon. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I'm going to learn from all of you. So thank you so much, Keith. Thank you. All the artists who participated. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have thank a great you. one. Yeah, you too. Thank you. So yeah, Casey was the last artist that we're talking to today. If you have any questions, I think we have like five minutes left before the live like, left for the live show. That's also if you have any questions, um, please share. Um, yeah, I just want to acknowledge like all the artists that you know came together. Like Jay Dante, he is such an amazing artist, and he actually has um, more pieces. I think it's like a continuation of his series here, up like with the gallery with the with five artists one love. But you know, you look at these pieces, and I feel like each time you come, you'll see something else that like see something different that connects with you. So. De Dante, I want to acknowledge Pretza, Misa, um, Precious, Elia. She wasn't able to meet you today. Shaheen, Elisa, like, thank you so much for, like, I guess, blessing this space. <laughs> Not to get all spiritual, but, like, it's just really amazing, I think, to see the end result. So thank you, and, and thank you for, for trusting us with, with your pieces and with this vision. Um, if Does anyone have any questions or any final comments that they want to say? I think this is the end of the live. So, yeah, and big ups to the Africa Center as well. Um, we're a program under the Africa Center, YG to come up, and we also have the mental health program as well that's here. Um, you can look at their pieces as well, try to figure out how art can connect to mental health. But if not, oh, Jay Dante's here. Hey. <laughs> Thank you so much for your pieces. They're amazing. But yeah, if there's no other questions, I guess we can like shut off the live now. You're welcome, Genesis. Oh, I wish I could send hearts back. <laughs> but I know that's not for me. <laughs> thank you. And thank you again to the Art Gallery of Alberta for like giving us this opportunity. It's been an amazing experience and a learning opportunity for us. Hopefully we can create more pieces and more exhibitions. Thank you to our five artists, one love, who reached out with this opportunity and connection with the art gallery and helped us like build this relationship and build this opportunity. So they have an exhibition happening back every day. I think it's happening right now, but again, because of the pandemic, we're not able to visit it. So when you come to see the art of reflection, definitely go to see five artists, one love, black every day. It's beautiful i already know and they feature such talented artists i haven't seen it but i know it's gorgeous <laughs> so, yeah thank you to everyone and yeah have a great one bye